My name is Kathleen O'Connor. I'm Associate Professor in Health and Physical Education, and I'm the Physical Education Department Chair. Well, I started as an adjunct uh, teacher in 1973 and became full-time in the spring of 76, so it's been over 43 years. Actually, I went to school here in 1964 and loved it, and uh, it was uh, small, and the classes were small, faculty were all very engaged, and I decided that after teaching at various other places, high school and junior high, that this is where I wanted to come. And so when I came back as a sabbatical leave replacement, I was thrilled. Um, we had a really great physical education department, um, very active. Uh, we had a great faculty, very, very involved faculty, which is I think what has been one of the joys uh, of working at Santa Barbara City College in comparison to some other community colleges in the state. I've had a lot of statewide experience and, and we are unique in that way that our faculty have always been very engaged. Um, we have, a very, have had a very collegial uh, faculty in the past and worked well with the administration and I think uh, that's what really attracted me is that, that we were all really, we wanted to be here, we loved being here, we loved our students and we really thought that this was a place we could make a difference. Well, there was no women's athletics program. Like when I was a student here, there was, there was nothing. In fact, the gymnasium building wasn't even here. And so when I came in that fall, Dick Wiest was the department chair, and he was the one that brought me in as a sabbatical leave replacement for Eleanor Simmons. And he called me into his office one day and he said, you know, I think we need to have a women's athletics program. Title IX had just recently been passed and things were really changing all around the country and he said I think we should do this what do you think and I said well I think that sounds like a really great idea I had coached uh, at a private school here in Santa Barbara um, I'd been involved in a lot of competition myself um, and so I thought it was a great idea I really didn't think that he wanted me to actually start that but that was his intention and so when you're young and naive you do a lot of things that <laughs> maybe when you're older and smarter you wouldn't do um, but I said okay and so I started working that fall on getting a women's volleyball team going that was the sport that I thought in Santa Barbara would would go well I'd coached volleyball and uh, and then our, we had a German teacher, Suzanne Culler, who was a tennis player. And so we decided that uh, she could be the women's tennis coach. So that fall, I started making contact with the conference in Southern California, and they actually let us join sort of as a guest member. And that was our first uh, semester of intercollegiate competition for women was women's volleyball. Um, we had a variety of reactions on the campus and even within our own department. Uh, I think there, whenever anything starts new, there's a lot of fear um, that things are gonna change and not be the same. And so there, was, there were individuals who were afraid that we were gonna take their money and that kind of thing. And I assured everybody that I would raise the money and that I would do the work and I would develop the curriculum and and we had a lot of support the the women that were in the department um, Maxine Decker Eleanor Simmons Kay Fulton were great uh, we had a lot of support you know on the campus for for doing this um, but it was not easy and it was a struggle internally as well as uh, externally just getting a new program going traveling uh, you know, it's, uh, athletics is complicated. You have eligibility rules for all of your student athletes. The, even back in those days, they all had to meet academic requirements. And getting all this started that first fall, 
that I came was uh, was challenging. But you know, again, you just you do what what you want to do. And we had no idea how many people would show up. We had no idea if I'd ha have even a team. So I put up a bunch of signs around the campus uh, for a tryout on a certain evening in the gym. And I was very nervous and had no idea if we'd even have a team. And we opened up the gym that night and 45 women showed up. And it was overwhelming. I had no idea. And now, of course, we don't have that many, but I really think it was a sign of the times. Women just wanted to be a part of something, and they hadn't had the opportunity, and it was new, and it was, it was exciting. So I had to actually coach two teams. We had an A and a B team, and out of the 45, I had to pick you know, 24 women, which I did. Uh, in those days, there just wasn't much opportunity for women, and so I didn't have very many players. And that whole group, I probably had four or five young women who had actually played any kind of competitive volleyball. So it was really a challenge, but it was fun. It was um, scary. Um, I still, my dentist is one of those young women who played. Uh, we had one of our players that went on to the Air Force Academy as one of the first women at the Air Force Academy. So, you know, those are the kinds of things in athletics that you you see happen pretty regularly, and it was it was very exciting. But it was hard. It was uh, it was a challenge. And on campus, you know, like I said, we met uh, opposition. Uh, I think people were afraid. They were jealous. Uh, they didn't know where the money was going to come from. But you know, it, it worked out and that spring we had uh, women's tennis with Suzanne Culler and, and that went very well. And so the p program obviously has built from there. We have 10 women's sports now. We just added our last new sport this last spring in sand volleyball. So it's, it's, you know, it's great. People now have no idea that there was ever a time when there were not women's athletics. I talk to the young women now and you tell them that story and they had no idea. They just thought it had been around forever. But like every change, it, it takes time and it, and it takes an evolution of ideas and it takes courage on the part of a lot of people to move forward. And we had that. Dick Wiest was wonderful. Many of the people in our department were amazing. And we had support from the president. And so it was, it was good. Well, I learn new things every day. Um, just talking about now as being department chair, I, we have a wonderful group of people, faculty, staff. I think we are so fortunate on this campus and, and on, in our department particularly. We, we have a wonderful group of people. And uh, without all of them in PE and athletics, it takes a real team effort. And so just speaking currently, I, I couldn't be any happier. They are wonderful people, every one of them. And the thought of any of them leaving just is frightening because we have such a well-oiled uh, sort of machine that keeps us all together. But I can say over all the years I've been here that the staff, um, classified staff, it doesn't matter if it's a custodian or or a, a manager, a dean, a, 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 a administrative assistant, without them we would be nothing. And I think we have great staff. Thinking of all the faculty, of course our department, you know, was amazing, but people who really helped me here when I first started were people like Dr. Kassir, John Kay, George Frakes, Barbara Lindemann, um, we, we just had amazing faculty that encouraged those of us that were coming in to get involved. Uh, my ex-husband had been president of the um, Instructors Association. He'd been uh, part of the, the president of the Senate before it was even the Senate. Uh, and so I had a lot, of, a lot of role models and a lot of encouragement. 
I remember John Kay came to me and said, you need to be Senate president. And I said, I, I could never be Senate president. He said, no, you're going to be Senate president. And it took people like that to even give you the idea that some of that stuff was possible. And so the, our faculty are, you know, are the strength of our college. And, and so many of them have made such a big impression. Probably the thing that, because being a department chair, you have a lot of administrative things, um, and I, I like doing all that. I like the committee work I'm on. I like all the, the curriculum work I do, but I still come back to teaching and the students and what, what we're really here trying to do and the impact that we might make, uh, that we hope that we make. And that's what keeps me going and, and gives me hope. In spite of a lot of other issues that can be occurring on campus, in the, in the world, uh, in our society, it's certainly things are challenging right now, but when you walk into a classroom, that's what gives you hope. And that you have those students that really do care and understand and learn and, and come back and tell you you know, later that it was, it, it, I made a difference. I think years ago I, I advocated a lot for academic advising for our student athletes and I actually started doing academic advising uh, with the help of, of a couple of the counselors on campus. Uh, student athletes have, they're the only group of students that have a time clock they have a certain number of years to actually participate. So they have a lot of rules. No other group of students has that many rules and I was seeing them fall through the cracks and not getting on to that four-year school because they just didn't know. So I started um, doing academic advising. I was the only one. I had really good support from a couple of counselors, learned what I needed to learn. And, and as a result of that, we developed a, a really strong uh, student support program for our student athletes and we now have a counselor that's devoted almost full time to that and I still do academic advising uh, for our physical education kinesiology majors but I also work with our athletes and and so I think that triggered a lot of really good programs to happen on our campus we've got involved at the state level um, our athletic director Bob Dinerberg was very supportive he and I even started a drug and alcohol education program called the Student Athlete Assistance Program and traveled all over the state and did education for student athletes on that. Unfortunately, that program, when I became Academic Senate President, I had to let some of that stuff go and so we really haven't started that up again, but I, that was something that I think was really beneficial and important. and the advising continues for our student athletes and now we have a, a, a person dedicated to really developing our, our tutoring program and, and all that. So I think that, you know, I'm really proud of that, of having had a part in starting some of that support for our student athletes. Um, I don't know, I've started a lot, we started a lot of new classes when I became department chair. We really tried to expand our program um, and have a lot of unique classes. We have surfing, we have um, different things like that that I think have, have really benefited our program and, and the students. We have a very uh, diverse physical education program. We have wonderful instructors. There are only nine of us full-time, but we have over 40 adjunct faculty who really keep our program going. I mean, without them, we would have nothing. And so they're really important to us. I started our self-defense program years ago. I think the self-defense uh, for women's class has been really uh, important uh, for them and very popular and, and I think and that's a, a good thing I think that happened over the years. Well, in our department, actually we have fewer full-time faculty than we had when I became full time, we had a, there were eleven of us, and now um, there are only nine. But because we've been able to hire adjunct faculty, 
we've still been able to grow our program and add a lot of new activities. So I think that's the good news and bad news. We've lost full-time faculty that were coaches. It's really a benefit to have full-time faculty coach because of the fact they're on campus all the time and they're, they're there where adjunct faculty often have other jobs and, and can't do that. Um, so I think the, the, the good news is that we have a very diverse program. The bad news is we don't have as many full-time faculty as we would like. So as far as our department, I think you know we've, we've done very well in spite of the, the full-time faculty deficit. Campus-wide, I mean, the campus has just grown tremendously. Um, I've been on curriculum committee for over 30 years, chaired it for about 20 years, and the curriculum growth has been tremendous, and that's really wonderful. Uh, and that does attract students to our school, which is what we need. And we need uh, students from all over. We love international students. They bring a great diversity to our campus. They're usually very good students. Um, they love being here. They set a really good example for, for our native students here. So we love to have them. Uh, we must have out-of-district students to maintain the programs we have. We have a marine diving program that's the only one in the country at a community college. We have a nursing program that, and a radiography program that, that all their students get jobs. We have wonderful programs in, in every area. So it's hard to pinpoint what really is, you know, where we have the best. I think everything we do is outstanding. And it's because the, the college has allowed that growth and encouraged that growth to diversify our campus and make it the, the number one community college in the country, which we were noted for a few years ago. And you know, when you, when you live somewhere, it's like being a family, you know where all the, the awful things are and where you, maybe you don't like things, but, but really when you look at our campus compared to other campuses in the state, we are outstanding. And it's hard to know that without that vision for the outside, but I go to all the statewide meetings. I've been on statewide committees. Um, I just came back from the Curriculum Institute. And when you talk to other people, you realize where maybe you need to make some improvement, but you really realize how lucky we are. And it's too bad that more people don't have that larger vision to really see how lucky we are and the good things that are happening here. I don't really think of achievements. I mean, I, I don't really think of my career that way. I think there are a couple of things that happened that I'm really proud of. One was receiving the Hayward Award, which is a statewide award that's given to four faculty every year. That was a, that was a huge shock, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. I think being faculty lecturer was um, probably the most frightening thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, I had nightmares for a year. Uh, it was I was the first person in physical education to have that honor, and and I appreciate it. It was in retrospect, it was uh, a really fun experience. I got my whole division involved, all of our students, all of our faculty and staff, and so. I tried to make it a celebration of all of us, um, so I think that was probably one of the honors that that you know I will never forget. Um, still have nightmares occasionally. <laughs> I mean, I don't know particularly of any achievements. I guess maybe the fact that I'm still here, <laughs> Perse perseverance, grit. <laughs> Well, probably as someone who never gave up, who kept fighting for things to happen that were for the benefit of our students, um, that, you know, that I cared a lot about our campus, our community, our students, our student athletes, our faculty and staff. It's probably the most important thing. <laughs>